Pause, pause two. Good morning to you. I'm Renee Allen. And of course, I thank you for joining me this morning. A Youngsville mother continues to grieve the loss of her 18 year old son. This comes after the Iberia Parish Coroner's Office identified the body found Friday in New Iberia as JV on Batiste. A timeline of the events leading up to the discovery of his body. Last week, Javion's family realized that he was missing after he did not return home Saturday and began their search to bring him home. Javion, Javion's car was found near a sugarcane field in New Iberia on Monday. That's when search parties began it came in and around and took a search around the area Friday. His body was found in a sugarcane field near where his car was found. Javian's family says they suspect foul play and believe the suspect should come forward. To all the fields, there's no way we wouldn't have seen it, and especially if you say we could have seen it on the left side, we would have been able to see the body. And we would have smelled it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's no way. I know it's eating your life because I pray to God that every time you close your eyes at night, you will see Javian and he will haunt you. That's gonna make you turn yourself in. Now, Batista's mother gave a statement on her son's passing on Facebook. She thanked the community for helping her and her family search for her son. She said, quote, you guys were on it just as much as us. The thousands of messages I received to help search gave water, to give water, find information and give prayers you did you don't know how that pushed me i am forever indebted to you for that end quote police have confirmed this is an ongoing investigation no word yet on any possible suspects or persons of interest state police u.s marshals and multiple other agencies are asking you to be on the lookout for this man he's wanted after he and his father allegedly held a woman at gunpoint and threatened to kill her before engaging in a standoff with authorities so according to the avoyles parish sheriff's office 49 year old david wayne smith the second and his father 72 year old david wayne simpson jr excuse me, assaulted and battered the woman at a home she ran and reported the father-son duo were on meth. Crisis negotiators surrounded the home and tried to get the men to peacefully surrender. The father surrendered and asked his son to turn himself in as well, though that did not happen. Deputies later learned he fled before deputies set up a perimeter. He's now wanted for false imprisonment, domestic abuse, battery by strangulation an aggravated battery if you know where he may be please please contact authorities so a Lafayette woman is hoping to see a man who allegedly broke into her home arrested after he stole her husband's ashes and it was all captured on this ring camera Thursday Lafayette police say while the suspect has been identified in question he is not currently facing any charges here's News 10's Britt LaFosso I felt like a knife was stuck in my chest and it had already been from when my husband's ashes were taken and I heard that they were disregarded in a garbage can and they're now in the landfill. And they're not just ashes, they're a loved one. Lisa Kufal says she and her 11 year old's paralyzed grandson were home last Sunday, July 9th. While Lisa was in the backyard and Caden was in his bedroom, she says this man broke into their home and stole a box from Lisa's bedroom. What the man did not know was that box contained Lisa's late husband's ashes. Caden explains how he felt. Bad, because that was the only thing we really had left of him. After investigators located the man and questioned him, he said he threw the ashes away upon learning what the box contained. I'm scared. I'm appalled. I'm angry. I'm hurt. I don't feel like I'm a human being, like any of this ha matters, because it's just ashes. Lafayette Police tell News 10 the man turned himself in, but after questioning him, decided not to pursue charges, determining the man was not mentally competent enough to understand what he was doing. Lisa says she does not believe that and now lives in fear this could happen again. I now sleep with a knife under my pillow. 
My grandson sleeps with me with my bedroom door locked. She says she feels as if police are not taking the case seriously because of the area she lives in. Especially in this community, because we are a low-end community, which I have also been told there's a lot of homeless people, this is to be expected. This is not acceptable. If we do not arrest these criminals, if we do not prosecute these criminals, the crime is never going to stop. Lafayette police say while the investigation is ongoing, they have forwarded, forwarded the case to the DA's office. The DA's office will review the case and determine if charges will be brought. All right, a three-year-old New Iberia girl is fighting for her life after being shot by a stray bullet. As we first reported last weekend on Saturday, Nova Grace was shot in the head. Since then, she's been recovering from her injuries in a hospital with her family by her side. New since Jasmine Dean bringing us an update on the toddler's condition from her mother and the support they're receiving from around Acadiana. It's a story you'll see only on 10. I had blood all over me. My shirt was full of her blood. I had blood on my face. I had blood on my arms. It looked, it looked like it came out of a horror film. Shelby Tuchek and her fiance says they were supposed to go on a date the night their daughter, Nova Grace, was shot in the head. Tuchek says instead they stayed in and around 12 a.m. Saturday, they heard gunshots. Tuchek says she went into shock after seeing the blood from Nova all over her. She says police were called and within eight minutes, they arrived and took Nova to a nearby hospital. Nova was then airlifted to a special facility where doctors performed a four-hour brain surgery. Tuchek says that? she and family waited Mama nervously for me. updates until they got the good news. And um, the next day after she woke up after the brain surgery, um, the first thing she did was give us a little thumbs up. Let me see. Give mommy thumbs up. Give mommy thumbs up. Give mommy thumbs up. Oh, good job, my baby. Tuchek says doctors told her Nova suffered two holes from the bullet going in the front of her head, coming out of the back, leaving her skull shattered. She says doctors removed a piece of her skull, requiring her to wear a helmet. Tuchek says Nova has to go through different types of therapy, but she is showing signs of progression. She says with everything that's happening, having Nova here is a miracle. It could have been way worse. I am so blessed. She has so many people praying for her and, and rooting for her. There's a lot of people, a lot. Jasmine Dean, KLFY News 10. Nova's family says she is extremely strong, but has a long road uh, ahead of her. A GoFundMe account has been set up for Nova's medical expenses. We have a link on our website. That's KLFY.com if you would like to donate. Then keeping our attention on Baton Rouge for you, after a veto was overturned on the ban on gender affirming care for minors, families of transgender and non-binary children are scrambling to get a plan in place. Some even are looking to pack their bags. We're hearing Capitol reporter Shannon Heck is bringing us their story. He's doing great and it's not fair to him to face the possibility that he'll be destabilized by withdrawing um, his medication. That's not fair for any of the kids. At a young age, Kathleen Hyde's son came out to her as transgender. For the last few years, he has been in therapy and on puberty blockers. The approach that we've had with our current treatment team is a very conservative approach. Um, they are absolutely not rushing kids into any interventions. Um, they're really, really taking their time. Being just weeks away from turning 13, he will not be allowed this care when the law goes into effect next year. Hyde says they are looking at other states where he can go every few months to get a prescription. For now, they don't want to leave their home state. My son is a ninth generation Louisiana, and I don't want to leave Louisiana. Our decision is going to be based on what comes in the next year or two as far as potential legislation that may be introduced. But for some families, they don't want to stick around. How can we stay here? Destiny Mink says that her child has had a hard time finding support in their school and community. We're being called groomers for simply, 
you know, protecting our child, accepting our child, supporting our child. While they don't receive medication, the rise in anti-LGBTQ legislation has Mink and her family looking at other states to move to. We did think about staying just to advocate, but I feel like just doors are just getting slammed in our faces left and right. Dr. Clifton Mixon with Forum for Equality provides counseling for transgender kids. He says he is scared of what will happen to the kids who have to come off these treatments or will have to wait longer to get them. And what we're going to see is kids are going to decline pretty quickly as their body starts to change around them in a way that is not consistent with who they are. During the veto override session, lawmakers claimed that the legislation is unconstitutional and could end up in the courts as it has in many other states, while others maintain their belief that families should not have this care as an option for their kids. For your local election headquarters, I'm Shannon Hecht. So Lemonade Day took place in Acadiana yesterday. This year, there were 15 stands in all. The day was all about empowering kids and the young people. News 10 caught up with the two sisters who were taking part. They have the Lemonade of Acadiana and it's Lemonade stand for the young ones, the youth, to start their own business, get a feeling of how it is to be an entrepreneur. and. Um, that's what she keeps talking about. She want to start her own business. So she's seven and she's four. And what are y'all doing here today? Selling lemonade. Selling lemonade. All right. The unrelenting heat continues.